Hello and welcome back again to another amazing episode. This is the Diaspora Transition episode where we interview people who move back from the diaspora and currently living here on the continent. You know, we interviewed them about their lifestyle, how they found it for the first time when they landed here in Ghana and how they are coping. So on this episode, we have here with us a lady who moved back to the continent with her son and she goes by the name Latra Davis and her son Kayvon. So without further ado, so welcome on the show. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very much. And welcome to Ghana. Yeah, Thank you. Thanks. Appreciate so, it. So before anything, you know, for people watching you right now who don't know who you are, okay, can you briefly introduce yourself? I'll start with you. My name is Leecher Davis. I am originally from Colorado Springs, Colorado, but prior to moving to Ghana, I lived in Florida and I am an entrepreneur. I am a mother. I am a visionary. I'm a dreamer. Um, I'm a lot of things. <laughs> Wow. But hopefully, people will know me as sweet and nice. Sweet and nice. Wow. <laughs> okay, I'm going to try to top that. So, uh, I'm Michael Davis. Um, this is my mother. And uh, I am a uh, musical artist, content creator, um, businessman, uh, handsome black gentleman. Talk them, tell them, tell them. I wow. did that. I produced that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> very beautiful. Your mom is very beautiful. Thank yeah, you. <laughs> So, you know, you guys decide to, to move to Ghana mm -hmm. and you are here. Yeah. Can you tell me how did it come? Why Ghana? Wow. Well, I didn't know it was going to be Ghana. Mm. My first understanding of moving to Africa was uh, God told mm -hmm. me to move in okay. prayer. Okay. Um, I do these annual prayer things that I ask and surrender to what God is showing me and leading me and mm -hmm. guiding me to do. And um, in 2019, I was in that mode in October and I was praying and the Lord spoke specifically to me and said, move to Africa. Yeah. The understanding about Ghana came about was um, we just basically did a list of various countries and we had what we felt was important to us, sort of deal breakers um, if certain countries didn't meet certain criteria and Ghana came mm. out on top. Wow. So what was it? Good qualities. What made Ghana came on top for you? Um, I believe the trajectory of Ghana is <laughs> on the cusp of a surely mm -hmm. worldwide breakthrough. Okay. But most people don't know it. Wow. Yeah. Can you tell me about that. Yeah. You know? So um, some of the things that were important to me personally was that uh, as a woman, I would be received and respected as a businesswoman, um, that there were opportunities for the type of things that I bring to the table, my gifts, my talents, um, my journey as an entrepreneur. I also wanted to be so just surrounded by beauty, peace, peace? Uh -huh. okay. uh, political peace was okay. very important to me. Um, low crime rate was mm -hmm. extremely important to mm -hmm. me and the idea of the richness of Ghana and when I say the richness I'm referring to the people okay. as well as the natural resources okay. that has actually provided the world with riches. Um, even There's, if nobody want to talk about it. Yeah. yeah. There is something happening in Ghana, mm -hmm. and it's, a, it's an undercurrent rumbling mm -hmm. that many people aren't aware of, mm -hmm. and I feel it happening. Wow. I'm extremely intuitive. Wow. Um, some people say you got to think with your head and mm -hmm. not your heart, but my <laughs> heart has led me well for a long time. Wow. And so it's just another type of intelligence when you are led by your heart. It's, the, it's not the lack of intelligence, it's another type of intelligence. Wow. And so Ghana just came out screaming to me um, after much discussion with my son. Okay. Yeah. So before I move to him, okay. Okay, let me ask you first. Okay. Why did you come with your mom? You know? Well, <laughs> um, you know, first it was just such a huge shock when she had, you know, was talking to the family. The yeah, time. exactly. So Very it was, loud. it was a huge, mm -hmm. just kind of shock out of nowhere. Um, but then I started to think about it for myself, and um, mm -hmm. was just thinking about where I was at personally in my life, not really doing too many things yeah. around um, my personal um, things going on. But then also uh, just 
ha feeling a longing for just more out of life, you know? Mm -hmm. And she said she was coming and I was like, there was no way I was just gonna have her come to a whole continent by herself with no, mm -hmm. no nothing, wow. knowing nothing at all. So, Thank you, um, yeah, yeah. He's very so <laughs> I was just like, yeah. Um, so I decided to come with her and um, it kind of, at the same time COVID was happening as well. Oh, wow. So um, while that was going on, I was just sitting at a job, whatever job, and I was like, I have always had a kind of a musical idea of like, came from a musical family and you know, just having that um, idea of always been a music lover, right. but um, really COVID mm -hmm. and all of that going on, everything getting shut down, mm -hmm. just kind of led me into like, I really want to get good at this okay. and has led me to be like consistently like, right. okay, being in a creative space as opposed to just being like, okay, okay. I'm going to listen to whatever, okay. you know? So, um, so yeah. When you were in the US, mm -hmm. you were, um, you know, doing all sorts of jobs? Yeah, right? I was in security okay. for uh, three, four years. Okay. And um, before that, you know, just did your typical, like, right. you know, uh, whatever restaurant working, okay. you know. Okay. Um, so I was doing that and it was okay, but, you know, I, I didn't really feel like happy, like wow. I didn't feel passionate about anything. Wow. It was just kind of like, okay, I'm doing this because I need some money, right. you know, on the side. Right. But, you know, there was no passion there. And I just figured, you know, I, I can just sit here and continue to rot away because I'm not doing what I love or to get into doing something that I love doing. And it just, it amazes me. Even the other day I was thinking to myself when I was making a beat, I was like, mm -hmm. wow, I really love mm -hmm. this. Like, mm -hmm. that's your passion. Exactly. So would you say you know? the invitation or your mom telling you, hey, I'm going to Africa mm -hmm. helped you to you know, kind of find yourself to really do what you're passionate yeah, about. Yeah, it kind of correlated wow. between uh, both of them because, you know, who knows, maybe if she hadn't said that, I might be still at that same job, right. you know, like being like, oh, dang, like maybe I should. And of course, COVID was a whole nother thing as well. Yeah. But yeah, like it just kind of all lined up together. And I, I think it has led to this exact moment, which has led to, you know, being in this interview. Wow. So that is and the great thing about that for me, to hearing my son talk about that is I am a person who loves to see people live their passion wow. like I do mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. I help people live their passion mm -hmm. um, as a part of my journey mm -hmm. to support people in their dreams and visions. Mm -hmm. And being from a musical family, my grandparents, my mother, my sister, my brothers were all musical. But I never forced my children to do music. I wow. never forced them. I encouraged them, but I never forced them. And I knew that at the right time, that passion that is on the inside of me that I knew that they were gifted in as little children, I knew when the time was right that each of them would take off in it. Mm -hmm. And so I'm just thankful that the yes that I said mm -hmm. to the leading to move here mm -hmm. sparked that for him. So that really is special for me. Okay. So according to what I understand, you finished your school and everything before you were working, before you came. Yeah, I did. So I finished high school. I did a little bit of college, like here and there on and off, mm -hmm. but I was um, more so into the side of like, okay, uh, turning eight, when I turned 18, mm -hmm. I needed a job. And I was like, uh, I think my dad was like, yo, like I know somebody in the security field, maybe you can get into that. And then somehow ended up doing it for years and years, you know, kind of fell into it. Um, so you didn't have, you know, to yourself tied down or whatsoever. Right, yeah, not really. So it made it easy for you to move. So yeah. tell me, let's go back to, to the first time you guys stepped foot, mm -hmm. okay? Mm. You, you dreamed it, you had a message from God, go to Ghana, mm -hmm. go to Africa. Mm -hmm. You listened to it and you were here. Mm -hmm. Do you guys remember how it felt like when you touched down mm. or even from the sky before the plane landed? Mm -hmm how you were looking at God. Do you remember the feeling? Can you walk me through that? I do remember the feeling. Well, let me just say, he and I came on separate dates. Oh, yeah. Because, yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. his visa was being held up because the consulate that was handling his visa got sick, but we didn't know it. And so the date kept coming closer to closer for, for, for us to leave and his visa wasn't there yet. So we 
call the consulate. Um, by the way, if you all are having problems getting your visa, the consulate in Arkansas is the man, okay? But um, he's doing it faster than any other Washington, Houston, all of the other consulate or the um, visa processors. Many people are waiting many months and it's a backup. So the Arkansas consulate is the way to go. But anyway, um, so because he was sick, he didn't process his during the time that I was going to be leaving. Mm. So um, I think how many weeks after? It was just a week after. And a week yeah. after. Oh, so yeah. my first time stepping foot in Ghana was amazement. Mm -hmm. um, it was euphoric, euphoric mm -hmm. because I just was like, I am in Africa. Yeah. Like I had never been in Africa before. Mm -hmm. I am here. And I was just so incredibly in awe yeah. and I'll say this mm -hmm. because being in America you are inundated from childhood because of all of the negative pre um, media stereotype. the stereotypical I to ask you, what yes. stereotypes do you guys have okay before? so in, mm. uh, you only see um, children with extended stomachs wow. with flies yeah, faces. on their faces. You're always seeing some advertisement to give to Africa because mm -hmm. the, you don't see the beauty of Africa. You only see the poor. And I'm like, America has poor too, but you all aren't showing that. You're just showing the poor in Africa, wow. which by the way, is a continent <laughs> okay, and so um, you you won't that. believe there are still people in America who don't know Africa is a country. that they Africa think it's a country? they think it's a country. Really? I'm not a joking. very poor country. Very poor country. There are people who are still yeah. thinking that. Wow. So um, it was beautiful to get on a plane in Washington because my uh, flight was from Florida to Washington okay. and then from Washington to Ghana. Ghana. Okay. It was beautiful to get on a plane and I could see the migration of other cultures weaning and all of a sudden I was on a plane full of people who were in the same complexion tones of myself wow. and it was gorgeous wow. and I started hearing the accents and the mm -hmm. dialects mm -hmm. changing mm -hmm. and it was beautiful and then I got to sit by a gentleman whose daughter was getting married mm -hmm. and so we had a wonderful conversation about that. Didn't know weddings were so big in Ghana, but I found out. <laughs> um, but to step off the plane and all of a sudden just see a sea of people that were peaceful and all the stereotypical things that I had been fed towards Africa, Africa since I was a child, I said, it's all a lie. Wow. And I knew it at the airport. Wow. It was a, I said, wow. all of those things that were negative wow. was a lie. And I felt it immediately. Wow. So mm -hmm. I don't know how you're. <laughs> yeah, I, I, and I think thinking about that, um, I just wanted to add a little bit. Mm -hmm. Like, at the same time, sometimes I don't fault a lot of the people for feeling a lot of the feelings they feel about um, Africa and just how it goes with like, like how she said it being poor and you know like not anybody having any money around here because that is what's being fed to these people in the same way that a lot of Ghanaians get fed like oh America is rich everybody's rich in America oh um, they just have the best things America's the best country this and that so isn't it <laughs> well you know that, that that's another conversation but um I I think that uh mm -hmm. America is beautiful. Mm. America has its issues just like every other country does. And I just think that there needs to be, um, uh, is it? there's a media bias mm -hmm. that comes with. It should be balanced. It yeah. should be balanced. Yeah. Absolutely. That's the word I'm looking for, yes. Damn, yeah. <laughs> it, it didn't it just hit us? Yeah. It just it came yeah. out of nowhere. You saw that. It yeah. shone, yeah. It yeah. shone yeah. upon us. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. But Hollywood won't allow that to happen. Mm -hmm. Right. Because so even if you look at their organizations like I might probably have to cut this one up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> let's let me take from Hollywood. Mm -hmm. Hollywood won't let that happen, you know. When you see the movies it's like this is the place to be, it's a dreamland. And mm -hmm. most Ghanaians think this way. Mm -hmm. But let me ask you this. Yeah. Okay? Did you fight back at one point when your mom told you, listen, I'm going to Africa? Even though you wanted to go with her, okay? Did you fight back, thoughts-wise? Really? 
Um, I don't think I, I ever yeah. fought back it, because like how I was saying, how it correlated with how I was feeling. Right. Um, I, there were other people in our family that yeah. definitely did they fight sure back, did. that pushed back. Yeah. And y'all um, know who y'all are. Yeah. Um, but I love you still. So <laughs> I, I think, but me personally, I don't think that right. I did. Um, so the family, like, yeah. did they had that um, stereotype too? That you guys would be probably hanging on trees and stuff like that. <laughs> we did have a few family members that were very concerned, and right. I know it was out of love. Okay. I, I know it was out of love, but it was out of ignorance that they were like, are you going to have toilets? Some, oh, wow. not all. Are you going to have toilets in where you live? Yeah. Are y'all going to live where there's yeah. u utilities? Mm -hmm. Is there electricity? Wow. And, you know, and there are parts of Ghana that there that's are, yeah. that, that's a true part mm -hmm. of Ghana. Mm -hmm. But again, the balance that you mentioned, it has to be balanced. they don't yeah. think that there's any, you know, in America, I lived in a gated community. I live in a gated community now because most homes in Ghana has a, a gate yeah, yeah. because there's mm -hmm. a lot of mistrust yeah. here, but that's a whole yeah. different thing. But um, so, yeah, there was a lot of, um, oh, you're walking the streets at night. Oh, well, are you all right? You don't need to be walking the streets. I said, I feel safe. I feel safer here than I did when I was at my house wow. in a gated Absolutely. community wow. Wow. in America. Really? Oh, absolutely. You feel more safe in Ghana than America? Yes. Convince the Ghanaian audience why you think so. <laughs> it's the truth. It's mm -hmm. the truth. I have no problem going outside my house, walking down the roadside wow. at five o'clock, six, seven, eight, nine o'clock at night. I don't have any reservation or uh, hesitation about it. Um, in America, there are some different emotions happening where people are on edge, mm -hmm. um, whether it's legitimate or it is perceived um, misconceptions, but for whatever reasons, mm -hmm. there are some uh, edginess and anxieties mm -hmm. about things. And so, you know, again, I lived in a gated community, mm -hmm. um, but sometimes I was asked, where's your house? Wow. And I'm like, I've lived here longer than you lived here. Why are you asking me where's my house? I don't right. know where your house is. Wow. Do you live here? And this is racism you're talking about. This is, sometimes it's racism, sometimes it's bias, mm -hmm. sometimes it's just straight out ignorance. Mm -hmm. All three exist very distinctly. Sometimes they cross, but it's, a, it's not a willingness to get to know a person. It's a willingness to say, I have a thought process that's causing me to have this misconception without asking or wow. inquiring first. Wow. So or just being nosy. I feel yeah. very, that too. Yeah. I feel very safe here. Wow. Yeah, I, I can feel it in the air. Like even, mm -hmm. like what I was, the in, shoot, look, <laughs> I'm, I'm saying like, there's a, there's a huge difference. Just overall, like the peace that I feel being here. Mm -hmm. um, I was just, last week I was walking home and I saw like there was a little girl walking home next to me for a good bit of the way to my house. She was like five, six years old. Wow. That doesn't happen in America. No. Like, she would be stolen. Yeah, she yes. would be stolen. Like yes. you just, you know, yes. so wow. there's- and you don't see that on TV in other places like that. Exactly, that's all I've been yeah. saying. It's in the news, but I think it happens so frequently that in America that it's there's a numbness to it. Mm -hmm. a desen uh, what is the word to say? Desensitization. Yeah, desensitization. Yeah. That desensitization. word. Yeah, um, yeah. It happens so frequently that mm -hmm. people are just, so we notice all the time, little small children are just running on the roadside. Mm -hmm. Nobody's trying to harm them, nobody's mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's, it's you just different. can't have that in America. Yeah, you guys you know? are saying so many beautiful things about Africa. Yeah. That is. Yeah. You love it than you do in the US. I. Hmm. <laughs> that's a. That's an interesting question. I feel like I'll, I'll go back to what I said earlier, which right. is. America is a great country that has issues just like other countries have problems. Mm -hmm. um, I love being here. Mm -hmm. um, but I do feel like there are issues with Ghana mm -hmm. in the same way that there are issues sure. in America. Okay. Sure. You know. I see. Now, yeah. what I normally ask is, mm -hmm. you know, you are saying so, this, so many beautiful things about Ghana, and mm -hmm. most Ghanaians don't really see it the same way you guys see it, mm -hmm. right? Why, and why are you guys seeing it like that, and what makes you see what we are not seeing? Mm. I think, to be fair, when I am not from here, mm -hmm. when my Ghanaian friends um, express their displeasure about mm -hmm. this country. Mm -hmm. um, 
I've not walked what they've walked. I've mm -hmm. not lived what they've lived. So I have to honor mm -hmm. and validate what they're expressing to me, their real life story, their journey. Um, but I can tell them it looks very rosy um, in another mm -hmm. country, mm -hmm. but what you're seeing is a lot of fantasy yeah. and purposeful deception because America has the reputation of being the greatest country in, in the, the world. world. And yes, I will not deny that there are wonderful opportunities in America. I won't say that there aren't conveniences that America has that would change people's lives mm -hmm. when they're not exposed to that. But in the same breath, there are strong problems mm -hmm. with America. Um, I love being in Ghana. I don't miss living in America. I miss my family tremendously. Mm -hmm. If y'all ever want to come live with me again, <laughs> babies, my mommy loves you. Um, I have children still in America. Oh, really? Yeah, oh, two, really? two children, so a total of three. Okay. Um, my oldest is a wonderful young lady, and my wow. youngest is a wonderful young lady, but job and school okay. is, they, they like their life. Okay. And I could not impede upon mm -hmm. what their journey is yes. just to make me comfortable but I miss them tremendously wow. so if anything about America I miss mm -hmm. it is my children on the country there are certain conveniences that of course I wish mm -hmm. were mm -hmm. more prevalent here um, the ease of systems mm -hmm. Efficiency. uh, efficiencies yes. You know, those are some things mm -hmm. that I truly do miss. It's hard to find in Ghana. <laughs> yes, there is a lot of... But will you still trade it for U.S.? <laughs> will you still trade all these inconveniences for no, the U.S.? No, no. I wow. still want to be here. Well, mm. But and I always ask this, you know, I see a lot of Americans mostly mm -hmm. moving back to, uh, to Ghana. Mm -hmm. And your story, you had a message, mm -hmm. you know, from the Most High. Yes. And it's been many other stories like that. And I ask myself, what is really happening there? Mm -hmm. I want to ask you the same question, right? Now. Yeah. I don't know why God told me to move here. And I, can, I, I wish I could tell people, they ask me all the time. And this is another thing, when they first learned that I was moving here, their first thought is, oh, are you going for missions? Okay. And I'm like, America needs missionaries. <laughs> we need to send some missionaries. Somebody come some over and help America. America. <laughs> so, no, I'm not here for missions. Um, well, are you, did you go over there? Because you done found you a man. Oh. Do you want to marry a Ghanaian? Which I do know that there are a lot of women out there that do that. Yeah. My purpose was not that. I wasn't thinking about that when I left America. Mm -hmm. um, as other people, oh, you're going to start a business. Mm. I do have a business that mm -hmm. I started before coming. coming. Okay that I'm able to continue to do okay. virtually, but I also am able to do it here. Let's talk about the business. Yeah, plug okay. yourself real business. quick. Okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so so what, I do... What are you doing on the continent? I am a business consultant, okay. and I have a wide range of um, abilities to help consult five, four, five, 500, five, what is it? Fortune 500. Fortune 500 <laughs> companies, as wow. well as NGOs. I, um, I specifically deal with the cognitive area of the mind, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. has to do with instinct and how we go about doing things and approaching challenges and problems. Um, I won't bore you all with the details of that, but I'm also able to help with um, work efficiency mm -hmm. and staff training. Okay, okay. So um, who's that? Say again? Customer care staff training. Absolutely. Customer service. But not oh, only yeah. customer care service, but within. Okay. So the best um resource a company has is the people that work for them whether that is a again nonprofit or whether that is for profit okay. if you don't treat the people who work for your company well their productivity is not going to be as good as it's supposed to be and when you are drowning people with forcing them to do the work the way you want them to do it as opposed to how they are naturally talented to do it it stifles them and their Therefore, they aren't happy, and, and a lot, quit. and they tend to quit. Turnover, which means less revenue. Wow. You see, wow. so when you have high turnover, you are actually hurting your business by not investing first wow. in the people that 
are helping your okay. company go. Okay. And so um, I help with that. I help board members mm -hmm. learn how to move their company in a different trajectory trajectory, a uh, different uh, direction. Um, I'm a trendsetter and I'm also a trend finder. Okay. So I have the ability to see vision and see where things are moving. Wow. And so companies that have been doing things the same way for 25 years wow. and they're dying, mm -hmm. but they don't know they're dying, <laughs> I can help them show them why you're dying and what your business is going to be like in 10 years, if it's there at all. Okay. So um, I'm also a personal trainer. I help people get unstuck out of life okay. so people who feel like they don't know what their life is about okay. I can help them their journey to find out what they're passionate about mm -hmm. and help them spark that passion mm -hmm. and then give them steps and actionable plans to move towards their vision that's a lot of things. It you is. Do. And then I'm also a music teacher. I teach vocals. I also am a really? drummer and I'm a music artist. So the music is in the family. It's all it is. It's, it's very much in the He's family. He's a, a musician yes. too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell me about it. Yeah, so, so I make uh, a lot of different types of beats Afrobeat, you know, oh. R&B, hip hop. Um, also uh, rap and sing as well, um, record things. He uh, can there's, sing. there's uh, mm. <laughs> But uh, yeah, so. I really, I, I think about myself and like where I was at when she was telling me she wanted to come here. And really the biggest thing that I want to do is just inspire people to like let them know like you can be at this point too. Like you can do what you love. Like you don't have to sit around, you know, doing what you hate just because it makes a few dollars, you know, here and there. Like you can really invest in yourself, put the time into yourself. Um, and just do what you're passionate about, and you and that's know, here in Ghana, or in, 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 no matter where you're at in, in the, the world, world. yeah, uh -huh. like no matter where you're at, like as corny as it sounds, cliche sometimes, like if you're not doing what you love, like you are like rotting away slowly, yeah. you know, yeah, you're and, dying slowly, it's you know, true. without even realizing. It's really true. So. And that's what causes most depression, that's right? right. Anxiety. Yeah, that's I, right. I'm really excited for you guys. Thank you. You know, and you know, people are watching. You know, people want to kind of, you know work with you guys how do they go about it do you have a, a medium that they can reach you out the reach out to you and stuff like that i can be found on uh, my website is lelees that is l-e-l-e-s mm -hmm. consulting solutions.com okay. and that gives you the business agency the firm mm -hmm. the consulting things all of that okay. and then uh social media always the instagram facebook mm -hmm. and linkedin mm -hmm. um i love helping people yeah. i just love helping mm -hmm. people it mm -hmm. makes me happy to see other people flourish wow. so that's where you can find me wow. okay. yeah, and um for me you know i'll look at the camera uh <laughs> cave on music um k-v-o-n um, on Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, you know, all the, that good stuff. So, uh, yeah, just big inspiration. I think I'll need your service. I need a, a beat for my videos. Absolutely. <laughs> we, we can get something done, yeah, bro. That'd be should, cool. Should, yeah, that'd be nice. Like sure. nice yeah. tunes before, you know, transitions and stuff like that. Absolutely. But, what, but let me ask you this. How did mm -hmm. music start it for you? Hmm. Well, I think it just started with her mm -hmm. and her and my dad. Um, just like... Uh, in a situation where just growing up, you know, I remember my dad showing me the stuff he used to listen to in high school, whether that's like hip hop or like Earth, Wind and Fire or whatever. And um, him and then also growing up in church as well. Okay. Um, so like I've had huge gospel influences. Okay. My mom saying every single day in the house wow. and every single night. Um, that Are you is, trying to say you know, something? Yeah. Are you trying to say something? <laughs> that is being, <laughs> you know. So yeah, like I, I think ever since I was, I could remember I was just heavy into music, you know, and not just like mm -hmm. whatever was in the house, but also I think my older sister as well okay. was really impl um What's the word? In influential. Yeah, yeah. I couldn't say words. Um, so it, she was really influential for me as well because she was always listening to music like outside from what we would typically listen to in the house. So I would always get like a spectrum of, oh, what's that? What's that rock music? What's that? Oh, she had a huge country phase one time. Yes, like she, did. she was huge in the country. So yes, like did. you know, I got that. Um, Ghana, you know. I there's a lot of country music being played here yeah, in Ghana. That was shocking to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have had... I'm going to let you talk about that. I'm just saying, <laughs> uh, 
in the in the taxis mm -hmm. and in the trotros. Mm -hmm. And for those who don't know who the trotros is, it's the public transportation Transport, yeah. here. Yeah. My lord, they love some um, country music over here. Country music is. Yeah. I, I was shocked about that. Yeah. I didn't know. Mm -hmm. For sure. But now I know. <laughs> and yeah. So, yeah. so um, I always got a different spectrum of like mm -hmm. whatever music. So mm -hmm. I think that increased my love from there mm -hmm. and just kind of grew and grew. And then I was also huge into like Christian hip hop my mm. whole like childhood wow. like huge you into love it. this church here uh, Lighthouse Chapel International oh okay they, they really love Christian mm. hip hop got you yeah so like I was just really really huge into that and then that um, as I grew just went into you know a lot of different mm -hmm. other hip-hop and then you know a lot of different types of music so yeah. that's how I kind of implemented wow. it in myself wow wow you, you made mention a lot of my dad my dad I, I'm not seeing him. where is he though Did he's he still in America yeah you don't yeah, want to yeah. come to Ghana well we are not together oh, okay. so yeah. we went through a, a moment where okay. our marriage we decided to okay. do what we needed to do and so uh, many people always ask it's, it's a big thing here when a w single woman moves here mm -hmm. they just Ghanaians like to know okay. where's your husband yeah How, why they, are you? they pounce on you yeah. like, like where's like, your where's husband you? yeah. Yeah. yeah oh yes where's women and men they want to know why yeah. are you not with a man right. how are you moving here without a man mm -hmm. And I'm like, because mm, I can, <laughs> and I did. Let's speak a little about that. If you don't mind. <laughs> I'm mm. okay. Most, most, the culture based on the culture. Yes. Yeah. We tend to groom our, you know, yeah. um, young females to yeah. get married to men, and that should be their life. Right? Mm. But you know, mm. women empowerment. Mm -hmm. You know, we we want to be able to people like yourself. You know, coming from the U.S., I've seen better. Know how to you know you know. You know, hold your own. Mm -hmm. I would say, but it's it's quite the opposite when you come to them. I think. How do you think? There are cultures in America, mm -hmm. different cultures that actually very are strong like that as well, like Ghanaians. Mm -hmm. um, the Hispanic culture, that's a huge thing. Okay. Um, different cultures in America also have As a very same. strong, mm -hmm. you know, women need to be married. Mm -hmm. um, I will say this with much respect. God made us complete. Mm. And if you are a woman that is not married by choice, um, you are not incomplete mm. just because you are not married. You are not lacking in life just mm. because you're not married. As a matter of fact, you can live your best life as a woman who is dedicated to being the best that you can mm. be and yielding yourself to the ways of God okay. and um, enjoying your life. You can enjoy your life without being connected to a mm. man. Mm -hmm. However, being with a man is good <laughs> when it's a good man. Okay. Hallelujah. <laughs> and that's what I'll have to say about that wow. with mm. respect. I wanted to ask this. You know, I think I know the answer already, but how do Amer uh, Ghana or Africa look like in the eyes of the ordinary um, American? Black American. I'm not talking about any Black American. Black American. Huh. Yeah. The ordinary. Not the one with the privileges of knowing the history of, of mm -hmm. black people or Africa, but the ordinary. Well, I, I think that can be separated into a couple of different categories, honestly. Um, because there is, I was just talking the other day about uh, something uh, regarding that. Um, because there's one person that feels that okay, we have to come back to Africa because, you know, it being the motherland and all. Um, but there's a certain toxicity that comes with that because it's like it comes with a certain superiority mm. feeling of like, oh, well, black people are, you know, like we're we're this and that. But uh, and I we never are wanna... wonderful. Yeah, no. And, mm. and d despite the many but... attempts by American or the uh, the history of America to tell black people that we're insufficient and mm. we're nothing we are very powerful and we, we are very strong. Mm -hmm. But I feel like there is also, you can't lean a million percent that way because it can be dangerous and cause you to feel like you are better than everybody else. Right. And I'm not above any other man. Like I never want to feel like I'm above anybody. Mm -hmm. um, so there's that side, but then on the other side, I think there is a little bit of ignorance, people that are ignorant, not really knowing where to, uh, where to come from. And uh, oh, you got a couple bees on you right now. Yeah, they uh, that's a problem. they like the, the white jacket here. He's saying um, hello. Yeah. Catch it. 
Yeah. I don't know. He just seems like he just wants to say hello. Yeah, already. And there's I, a butterfly as well on your yeah, foot. See, look on, at you. You just nature. They like the white. Look at nature just the gravitating the towards you. They like the frequency. <laughs> <laughs> okay then. Okay. Yeah, um, yeah. So, uh, yeah. So on the opposite end of the spectrum, I think there's a, a certain uh, group of people that, if you're talking about Black Americans that want to come over here, and I would just say that. Do your research because it's very important mm -hmm. because even black Americans, I've seen, you know, some of the questions that I get asked, it's like, are you going to live in a tent? <laughs> and it's like, bro, like, you know, mm -hmm. some of these things. And like she was saying, mm -hmm. some of that side, OK, you get the villages here and you get this and that. But mm -hmm. at the same time, there are rich people here. Rich. There are rich guys. Yeah. like uh, just the whole spectrum mm -hmm. of uh, what Africa is supposed to be. Like people don't know who Mansa Musa is, who mm -hmm. is like the richest person to ever live, mm -hmm. who is African. Mm -hmm. Like there's just like a certain perception that comes along with, you know, yeah. like, oh, you could be moving to Ghana or you could be moving. Oh, you don't know what's over there or but there's poor people or whatever. So I think that comes from ignorance. But at the same time, I don't really blame them because it's what's being fed to them as well. So wow. I love I love the story how it's going so far. But, mm -hmm. you know, it's been all positive. Which, mm. which is true, your experience here is amazing, mm. but I refuse to believe that you've not encountered any challenges. Oh, <laughs> brother, hey so, what, <laughs> yes. what has been some of the greatest challenges you guys have faced so far when you came back? On a personal level, just um, again, it was gorgeous. I mentioned before, it was mm -hmm. gorgeous to me to mm -hmm. be amongst the people that are same tones as awesome. I am. But culturally, I am not from this country mm -hmm. and the traditions that I did not grow up with, the belief systems that are here, the way things are handled here st struck me. Mm -hmm. And I knew, I was like, wow, I have so much to learn yeah. and I don't know if I can learn it well in a short amount of time mm -hmm. because there's a lifetime of there's centuries of history here mm -hmm. and I'm brand new so that was a struggle for me um, moving money mm -hmm. from America to Ghana wow. is incredibly hard wow. and I worked in the financial system the financial industry mm -hmm. moving money to Switzerland moving money to the UK moving money to Thailand moving money to everywhere is easier than moving money to Ghana. Wow. There is such a distrust in the American financial sector of m economic money moving here. Mm. It's, it's, a, it's a problem. Because they think everybody has it's a, a scam, problem. essentially. It's a problem. When they hear Ghana, they hear scam. I mm. literally had wires rejected because it was Ghana. Mm. That was the only, my, the banks told me. Mm. And I said, well, why did you even allow me to initiate the wire transfers when you knew it was Ghana? Mm. You, you could have told me y'all wasn't going to do it in the first place. Mm. Now I have to go through all of this. Wow. It's been horrible. Wow. Mm. So for those who need to think about your money and how to get your monies um, transferred without high fees mm -hmm. and with ease, mm. choose banks that have familiarity with moving money to Ghana because uh, Western Union, they don't like, I'm, it's, it's a problem. Wow. That's She's calling people out. I'm telling you, wow. I'm just gonna say it. I changed a bank and I was a <laughs> member of that bank and because they gave me such a hard time, I closed my bank account with them and I said, I will never tell nobody to be y'all's bank. Mm -hmm. No, you, it, just, it's, it's, it shouldn't be that difficult. I do you not know in Miami, Florida, mm -hmm. money laundering is huge, mm -hmm. drug trafficking is huge, but they refuse to send money to Ghana mm -hmm. without all of this, pro this process mm -hmm. that's more than any other country. And I'm loud because it's, it's upsetting. It's, it's a runaround, um, yeah. I think, don't you think yeah. they're trying to prevent people from investing into the continent and using the fraud mm -hmm. as a, as a um, you know, mm. I've you know not thought about it that way. That's I, interesting. I've not thought about yeah. that. Um, I've not thought about that, mm -hmm. but that's interesting. 
And that's the same thing as well with, I feel like, what the media is showing a lot of yeah. Americans in the spectrum. of There's nothing positive about not just yeah. Ghana, but about Africa in general. Yeah. You never hear anything positive. Mm -hmm. um, just talking to friends of mine, you know, in the past, they've always been like, oh, well, you know, with Africa, like, and it's just like nobody sees anything positive about here. And I feel like centered around black Americans, essentially, like it's very specifically mm -hmm. told like, oh, well, you don't go over there because, you know, so. I think it is very intentional that they are trying to not to stop the world's yeah. transfer. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Fraud is a minimum case. I mean, mm. it's just the wealth you see in this country, not even one percent came from fraud. Fraud yeah. is just they buy cheap cars and yeah. run around. Mm. It's nothing. Yeah. It's not now, real. I will say this though, there another issue that I have had here mm. is the the dashing. Mm. dashing. Okay, that is um when I am coming home from Accra to where I live, mm -hmm. uh, there may be some police uh, barricades mm -hmm. and uh, they stop my car and they ask me, hey Yay. sister, <laughs> hey sister, where are you going? And I'm like, oh, I'm going home. Oh, oh, really? Oh, well, let me see. And they start looking in my car and they just want, oh, well, why don't you dash me some? Yeah. Now, please know that just like there's cases of police brutality in mm -hmm. America mm -hmm. towards African Americans, not all police are bad in America, but there's some pretty rotten mm -hmm. policemen. Mm -hmm. And black people are being targeted in, in America. In Ghana, mm -hmm. You speak about it. Some of the mm -hmm. police officers, mm -hmm. okay, and if any of y'all see my face, <laughs> you know who you are. Mm -hmm. I should not have to give my hard-earned money because I'm an American don't mean that I don't work hard for my money. Mm -hmm. All Americans aren't rich, like some of yeah. my beautiful Ghanaian <laughs> friends think. I work hard for my money. Mm -hmm. And if you're going to call me a sister, mm -hmm. but then won't let me pass until, you give them until I give you money, that's a problem. Mm -hmm. If I'm at the customs in Tema mm -hmm. to get my container, mm -hmm. I should not be there from 9.30 a.m. till 10 at night because you don't want to release my container. Mm -hmm. I've paid all of my duties. Mm -hmm. I've paid everything. Wow. But because you want me to dash you, mm -hmm. then you're going to hold my things illegally. Mm -hmm. That's a problem. Wow. It's mm. been happening. It happened to me. Yeah, I'm telling it, you my it, story. It happened to wow. us, yeah. Really? We, we had to, oh yeah, just give them something. Before they like, left. Yeah, it, it was like 10 different people that wow. consistently like, oh yeah, dash me some money. Oh wow. yeah, yeah, ask me for, yeah. Wow. And oh, yeah. yeah, so. That was, that was horrible. These things that I want to ask the, the people who are in charge of those mm -hmm. particular areas, don't be okay with that. Mm. Don't well, be okay do with that. How do you think we can change it? Because it's been happening for so long <laughs> and we don't seem to get, find a solution to that. So mm. I'll give you an example. Right. Because I'm still new to the country, mm -hmm. I, um, I did not know certain things and I was driving and mm -hmm. accidentally did a U-turn mm -hmm. in a space that I wasn't supposed to, but I didn't know it. Mm. An officer pulled me over. He pointed out my error. Mm -hmm. I take it. I didn't know. And I explained it to him. I'm sorry, officer. I didn't know that that was a no U-turn. Right. Oh, okay. Well, let's go to the station. Mm. I said, oh, okay. I was by myself. My son was not with me this mm. day. And so he says, oh, well, we don't have to go to the station. Uh, we can take care of it right now. We mm. can take care of it. And I says, what does take care of it right mm. now mean? Oh, well, it, you can pay the ticket at the station or you can just do it here. And I said, I'm sorry, I don't think you're authorized to receive the payment for a ticket right here. Wouldn't I need to do that? in another way oh you want to go to the station okay then we'll, we'll go to the station and i said let's go to the station because i'm not the one mm. i'm not the one <laughs> Straight up. friends have told me just give them small small mm. so small small for americans that don't know means give them a little bit mm. give little them bit small money. small so you can just go about your day okay. no the change happens when people start saying no, no. okay you might be at the police station mm -hmm. all day. Yeah. You may have to go to the court, but that's what black Americans did in America with crooked white cops. Mm. They said, no, I have a right to eat at this restaurant 
or I have a right to be here. We are willing to do what has to happen for this change, change to come. And it's not easy. It's but, not easy. Know. But yeah. if we keep allowing it, mm -hmm. then it will never change. Wow. Wow. And I'm just telling you, I'm not the one. <laughs> but let, let me ask this. What, there's a lot of challenges, okay? Yeah. Mm. But what are you doing differently that is making you adapt? Because people do come here mm. and they, are, they get too overwhelmed with the challenges okay. and they leave. Mm -hmm. Okay. But you guys are here. How long mm -hmm. now? Almost how many? Almost a year. This year almost a year. Uh, it's still standing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How are you adapting? Our support system okay. is yeah. huge. Yeah. Okay. I think it's the relationships. Okay. Because um, we have, yeah. yeah. And I will say this it's important to purposefully find mm -hmm. Ghanaian friends. It's okay. important mm -hmm. okay. because if you don't do that, mm -hmm. then you will only be exposed to, again, as, not just diasporans, but just like in America mm -hmm. or any other country, you have people who do wrong mm. and treat you bad. bad. Mm -hmm. But you also have, I've met the most awesome people here from Ghana mm -hmm. that are true friends of mine mm -hmm. that don't have an agenda mm -hmm. they don't want anything from me mm -hmm. they want the best for me and my wow. son wow. and their hearts are pure mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. it's important to get those people to connect with mm -hmm. and it might take some time mm -hmm. but you'll get them the other thing that I've done personally is when I've had too much of the challenges mm -hmm. I go away and just spend a night or two in a hotel <laughs> I do and I allow myself <laughs> to be pampered. Okay. I'm, I'm a huge proponent of self-care. Okay. Okay. And so when I have felt like I've had mm -hmm. way too much, mm -hmm. I will just go and say to my son, hey, mama's going to go to the hotel <laughs> for a day or two, and I just need to relax. Okay. I need to swim at a swimming pool. Mm -hmm. I need a spa moment okay. or something of okay. that nature. Okay. That's what I do for myself. Okay. What do you do? What do you feel yeah. like? Yeah. I, I think I, I'm, I'm comfortable. From that cloth as well like just self-care you know just sometimes you just need to get away you know like even when i wasn't living with her um and i was in colorado um not feeling the best honestly and sometimes and i would just like go for a walk and just you know experience nature and colorado has like beautiful views honestly like this so um and i think us living in the mountains like it, it kind of correlates yes. with that because you know us being from colorado yes. as well so oh, I um I think that was really, uh, it's big for both of us, you know, mm -hmm. to be able to just go outside mm -hmm. and just kind of experience nature. You know, of course, the climate is very different over here, mm -hmm. but uh, I think it's very good when you just are able to just go out and just like feel nature around you, you know, you feel the connection. So, mm -hmm. And you, yeah. you, you become okay after that. Yes. So you guys have never yes. got to a point where you are frustrated, you know, that, listen, I'm going to... I'm just gonna pack my bags and no. leave. Never. No. Never. Mm -hmm. No. Because we have a support system with each yeah. other, you know. I want yeah. to just really quickly backtrack and I want to make sure I'm balanced with mm -hmm. the police situation. Okay. There have been some Ghanaian police officers who have not done that. Okay. And they've been very nice, nice. Okay. and very helpful. Mm -hmm. So I just want to make sure that okay. that's balanced. Yeah. I mean, majority of them are, are, are dashing, are doing the dashing. Yeah. So I agree with you, yeah. honestly. I've, I've had encounters so many. Yeah. My, the guy behind the crew is so excited that we are talking about this. He always yeah. had to help me argue with them. Yeah, it's terrible. To really say we are not going to pay anything. No. You know, most of the time, like, okay, we, we have we have to go. We have no. to go. We have no time. So you end up having to, no. you know. And they will it. hold you all day. Yeah, they, they will hold you destroy your day. Yeah. Yeah. Imagine just, I'm coming to do right. an interview mm -hmm. and I'm stopped. Yeah. Yeah. My day will be ruined. People yeah. are waiting for me. So you end to, you, t you tend to Just give, give it, it to make it. And then it doesn't make it stop. No. So the advice you gave is really... Yeah. One day I'll try it and see how it goes. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I have even been I have even been advised to wear white old women mm -hmm. wigs so that they'll think mm -hmm. that I'm an old woman so that they won't make <laughs> so they won't ask me for a dash. Because that's very big Someone here to told me, respect your elders, just, you know, yeah. just put on an yeah. oh, old woman. When you see the police on, put an old woman wig on, and they'll just pass this you. This is new. And I'm just like, what? Are you yeah. crazy? I am too cute. No, ma'am. No, sir. No, never. <laughs> Wow, yeah. wow, that is funny. I'm mm -hmm. just telling you what I that was told. <laughs> well, I, you know, most I, I I like the fact that you guys are excited and you know being here on the continent. Mm -hmm. But Ghanaians are sometimes upset. Those who have never traveled and they see foreigners coming, they're like, "Oh, it's beautiful here. You guys don't see the opportunities." And they're like, "Nah, because you are privileged, and that's why you think it is all sunshines and rainbows." Mm. So they put it to me, asks if the citizenship is taken away, would they still be able to tell 
the same story they're telling now or be happy to live here? Do you think you can be able to live in Ghana permanently for the long term without, you know, having to be an American to go back or to escape if you want? Do you think you'd be able to? If the op if I understand your question, if we did not have an option to yes. go back yes. as easily as make we make, can. Let me make it easy. If your American citizenship okay, got you. was taken away. Yeah. Got you. Yeah. I, I can. Okay. I can. Hmm. I'm not going to speak for my son, but what I... What do you think? Let me hear you. I think if there was not an option to go back, mm -hmm. then I feel like I could live here. Mm -hmm. um, but I do like to have the option. <laughs> I would like to be honest yeah. and say that. Mm -hmm. um, uh, there is a feeling of like, mm -hmm. I do miss mm -hmm. like some of the certain efficiencies with business and mm -hmm. and um, the lack of efficiency here is frustrating. Mm -hmm. um, some yeah. of the interactions, like we were just talking about yeah. the problems, you know. Um, I do miss some of the things about America that okay. you just aren't really getting here most of the time. Okay. Um, Which one? Which one do you miss? Well, I, I think, like I was saying, like the the fact that you know you might have to go to a business and okay. oh, and that? come. Well, you that that's big food. for me. You know? Oh yeah, absolutely, yeah. Mister. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Especially because we both love to cook. Like I'm huge on for food. Sure. You know? Um So like, there's that. You know, and of course, I miss my friends. You know, mm -hmm. I miss my friends and family as well. Um, and yeah, but I would say uh, one of the biggest things for me is just that port situation where okay, we had. Yeah, you know, that that was. Unbelievable. I think, you know, in Ghana, they've made it a way that if you knew somebody, yeah. regardless yeah. of all those things, you would have, mm -hmm. it would be seamless. Yeah. But in trying to do it by yourself, it's mm -hmm. a whole different thing. Oh, we had even, somebody, even but though, it's even like... In that, in, even in that, there's still, the dash is not as much. Right, but yeah. you still yeah. are. You yeah, you, it's just, just not as much. Yeah, you know, I just, so. this, is, this is corruption. I, it That's it one is, of yeah. Ghana's problems. It is, yeah. and I just, I just, I'm not with that, and mm. I am very adamant mm -hmm. about um, being a person to not accept it. Mm -hmm. And that's another thing. Let me ask this. Sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Finish with. No, um, when, when my sisters and brothers in Ghana say, mm -hmm. oh, you'll adapt, I don't want to adapt to corruption. Okay. And mm -hmm. I don't think it's right for you to adapt. Okay. Okay, yeah. Don't adapt to yeah. corruption just yeah. because you're from here. Mm -hmm. Don't adapt to it. Mm -hmm. Be be against it okay. and do things to help change mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to ask that. I've heard a lot of people saying oh, America is almost as corrupt mm -hmm. <laughs> as Ghana. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Which one do you think is most corrupt based on your experience? Oh, now my God. corrupt I've been in America. America being corrupt is more of a very strategic, you know, it's systematical structured. corruption that exactly. feels almost like normal, but it's really corrupt. Corruption is corruption. America just makes it look good. Okay. Yeah. Because there is absolutely yeah. corruption yeah. in America. Yeah. They just make it really pretty. Mm. Mm. And they put it in documentations um, and in systems mm. that um, when you are not educated in America, mm you go with it because it's all is mm -hmm. it look it's professional looking okay. it's um polished mm. but it's as corrupt as corrupt can be yeah. and mm. no absolutely it's there yeah. i think it's way more upfront here okay. but what america does is and i'm no you know historian or anything mm -hmm. but there has been consistent history that has been rewritten over time mm -hmm. and rewritten and rewritten so to the very point where mm -hmm. we still don't even know all of our history wow. Like we don't wow. know, That's you know, right. yeah, things that have been blanketed over, wow. you know, all the inventors that, you know, made huge advancements in America mm -hmm. that won't be talked about because they were people of color. Yeah. And then somebody that's white gets all the right. credit yes. for whatever, you know, mm -hmm. that's happened for hundreds of years, you know. And it's, um, I think she said it perfectly. It's just, it's dressed up in a way where it's like, oh yeah, America, but it, you know. Yeah. Um, and still, there are a lot of great things about America. So, like, I, I don't want to yeah. lean on either side. I just, you know, I want to be balanced. Yeah, I'll give you a, a really great example, Hayford, of corruption in America. Mm -hmm. When um, a 15-year-old black young boy mm -hmm. can steal something at a store okay. and another 15-year-old white little boy steal something similar or the same, same at the same store, mm -hmm. The black young boy's punishment is harsher and longer mm. and will stay with him on his record for a lot of his life and take legal um, action to remove it off of his record. Whereas the 15-year-old white young boy 
will get a lighter punishment and it won't hinder his future mm -hmm. when it comes to job placements. Mm -hmm. uh, or if I can say this as boldly as I'll say mm -hmm. it, um, a drug dealer who sells the drugs, but the person who provided and supplied the drugs is not the same color mm -hmm. as the seller, mm -hmm. why is that seller getting 50, 60 years life prison, but the supplier does not get arrested at all. And the supplier, the supplier? and the supplier is the a lot of the time, okay. in, yeah, the supplier a lot of the time is somebody is that, that is not corruption? our country. I know so, it is. Wow. You know. And I heard there's a lot of um, black um, children being, um, what is the word, incarcerated? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's speak about yeah. that. Yes. Yeah, so I used to be a youth um, director for a church many years ago, mm -hmm. and we used to go to um, youth camp, uh, youth um, houses, if you will, where they call it troubled children who got in trouble with the law. And yes, their um, sentencing is typically more harsh and longer than a equal counterpart. Um, or even in school, if you will. Um, my son, being a young black boy in, in the public school systems, if he is playing with little boys and they're all doing the same thing and this is a real, I'm giving you a real situation, all the little boys were doing the same thing, but my son gets suspended from school, but the other little boys that were doing the same thing didn't, I'm wondering what's going on. Were they not all doing the same mm -hmm. thing? Why did my son get this punishment and these children didn't? What is the benefit they get from doing this? Mm. What is the reason? What, what benefits them to throw all black folks, young teenagers, uh, into jail and what, how do they benefit from this? That's a good question. With That's such love question. and respect, I'm going to say this. When something is powerful and you don't want it to succeed and excel, you have to squash it. Hmm. Wow, I like it. I feel like a lot and of And when you yeah. have to squash it, it has to start when it's young. Wow. Mm. Because when you can train the mind to feel inferior, then when the mind grows, the mind doesn't grow. So the body grows, mm -hmm. but the mind has been cultivated and trained. Mm. Wow. Wow. I mm. like that. Yeah, I think that there is a... Uh, <laughs> yeah. Love. yeah. She's saying she, she's literally saying the, the brainwashing starts from the child. Yes. Oh yeah, absolutely. And then that leads to self hatred, which can also lead to um, shoot. I'm rewiring my own brain yeah, currently at you. now. You know, um, just in the way that I feel about you know certain um, you know relationships mm -hmm. or just like oh um, this person should be doing this that and the third because of what their color is or, or whatever you know you have to do the work for yourself to undo these things that have wow. been pushed on you from a young age let me, like, let me yeah. ask you yeah. when you you came to ghana and saw that the highest uh, chair on the land is is ruled by black folks mm -hmm. looking at the presidency and oh. even wealthy you mm -hmm. know and then looking at what they told you from childhood mm -hmm. knowing that you are black and you're powerful how did that make you feel when you, you knew this for the first time? I, I don't know if I see it in the same way, just because I'm looking at presidentially, mm -hmm. um, and uh, all due respect, I don't know about all of the policies that go down here, mm -hmm. um, but I do know there is a certain guise of, oh, the, the president and the government in general, oh, cares about the people, but a lot of these people are just trying to line their pockets for their families. Yeah. They're not really caring about right exactly it's the corruption it's like it so in a way it is the same way that america is doing it in a way where they're like oh yeah we we care about the people it's all about the people but they, they do not care so about you don't the believe that the, the um people in, in power really um rules like we see them to i think they rule but they they rule over what they want to and whatever benefits them okay. as opposed to what okay, benefits my question people. was like can you my example obama became a person mm -hmm. yes. And for once, you'd see people would have hope 
-hmm. of their children becoming mm -hmm. presidents because mm -hmm. this is our land. Yeah. I remember but, that inauguration, yeah. Yeah, but then when in America, it's almost like one out of a trillion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But here it's every day. Right. Um, I will say in America, um, although I don't agree with all the policies mm -hmm. of the previous president, mm -hmm. I was, no, no, sorry, two presidents ago. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, who was that one? Obama. Obama, Obama yes. Mm -hmm. I had to make sure I got that right. Um, I was not necessarily agreeable to all the policies of President mm -hmm. Obama, but I was incredibly proud mm -hmm. to have lived to see a man of color at the highest office in America. Wow. I mean, I was proud. But do you not know what I was more proud of? Mm -hmm. When I came to Ghana, and got Ghana CDs and saw black men oh, no. on money. <laughs> Baby, let me let me tell you. I was like <laughs> Yeah, you know. It made me feel so awesome. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah, I felt that yeah. actually more it than seeing feel like a feel black so president. Yeah. Awesome. yeah, I definitely did. And I I did because I did not have the education of who these men on the money mm -hmm. were, mm -hmm. I did not have the cultural understanding mm -hmm. of who each person was and mm -hmm. their contributions mm -hmm. to the country. Mm -hmm. But just the fact that, mm -hmm. it's a black, yeah. that they were... I think that's what we, we, we oh, all love, you know. It was beautiful. Mm -hmm. wow. Now, let's, let's talk about challenges. You've mm -hmm. been through everything, right? You've been up, down, everywhere. Mm -hmm. People who are watching you right now, they're like, oh, I would love to... to Give it a try. Mm -hmm. Okay, come to Ghana, come to Africa. Mm -hmm. yeah. Give best three advice to them. Oh, best top three advice. Mm. Prepare spiritually, okay. prepare mentally, mm. and prepare financially. Nice. And what I say by prepare spiritually, okay. um, I have my own spiritual practices that I am aware that everybody does not have. Mm -hmm. And it's the same in Ghana. Um, although I understand it to be a Christian mm -hmm. country, there are still tribal um, religions that are practiced here. But whatever your religious practice is, you need to prepare spiritually. Mm -hmm. And that requires shutting out um, unproductive voices. Mm -hmm. Because unproductive voices, when you're trying to make a move from one continent to another, unproductive voices will kill any type of effort. Mm. It'll kill it. Wow. So you need to prepare spiritually and connect to, for me, it is God the Father, Son, mm. Holy Spirit. But whatever your deal is, mm. prepare spiritually. Okay. Mentally, you're going to have to purposefully debunk and um, declutter your mind of the miseducation of Africa and okay. specifically Ghana. Okay. Then um, physical, uh, financially, again, those nice shoes that you are wearing that cost three, five hundred dollars and that purse that you pay in a thousand dollars for, honey, no, mm -hmm. put that money in a high bearing interest account. Let that interest grow. Stop uh, spontaneously spending. Um, get your monies together okay. and learn financial literacy. Okay. Learn financial literacy. Get your brain right about your money okay. and find banks that will be able to get your money to you. Easier. Easier. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, you guys have been here, you've seen opportunities around, mm -hmm. I would say. Yes. What are some of the opportunities you've seen that if people want to come do business right now, if they should invest in it, they would, they would make some profit? This is a hard mm -hmm. question for me mm -hmm. because I want to also see Ghanaians take advantage of the opportunities okay. that are right in front of them. Okay, so tell the Ghanaians watching if you've seen some opportunities that they can capitalize on. Okay, um, I have the beauty of seeing um, woods crafters, yeah. generations of wood crafters that are incredible at their at their craft. Mm -hmm. I see the um, leftover wood that is there. Toothpicks mm -hmm. are uh, not toothpicks. Toothpicks and matches mm -hmm. are sold at all of the stores, yeah. but none of them are being made by any of the people. When and the material is mm -hmm. there, wow. that's something simple. Mm -hmm. 
I also help with people with knowing what to do with their business. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's one opportunity. Okay. Um, I can tell you um, another opportunity that I think a lot of Ghanaians don't mm -hmm. see right in front of them is to rent out motor um, machines. Mm -hmm. So drill bits. Okay. Um, when craftsmen need mm -hmm. to get a drill bit, they have to go get it from somebody. Yeah. So invest in things that Building equipment. Building equipment. Machines. Absolutely. Okay. Start small, small. Okay. Get one equipment, mm -hmm. rent it out to a few different people that okay. you know who can handle it well and not mm -hmm. destroy it and not spoil okay. it. Start there. Okay. Um, I want to address one thing. Please do. So we've talked about this before. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like, and just going back to that other thing about um, advice, mm -hmm. um, I feel like the importance of relationships as well is very oh, important. Yes. Um, oh, because, yes. Oh, yes. Um, we are just walking down our, you know, our roads or wherever around our house, and we see all of these businesses of these ni super nice ladies, but they're all selling the same thing. Mm. And they won't come together because it's like, oh, well, well, no, don't want to do business with Ghanaians or don't want to do this. But it's like you guys are all selling the same things for the same price. Yes. If y'all came together, y'all would be able to make more money, mm -hmm. make uh, spend less on the same things mm -hmm. that you're getting and then make more with have more business. It's but true. nobody wants to come together. Yeah. It's like yeah. merging. You know, oh, I, again, and please, please know that I do not say this as I know best. Okay. But from a business standpoint that has business development mm -hmm. training, mm -hmm. when you merge, you are collecting your resources. Mm -hmm. And when you are buying the same products as three other people, if you all bought in bulk, the cost of that inventory is lower. The higher the quantity that you buy, the less mm -hmm. it is. So if, each, if four, small roadside businesses are individually buying, they're buying at a higher cost, as opposed to merging and then bringing. The reason why, it, I think why it's happening is because again, it goes back to that, from my understanding, the cultural thing of women being married and during the bride price, they ask for money to start their own business. So I think it delves into the traditions mm -hmm. of, the, of the culture mm -hmm. and women are taught to find something to earn money, which I applaud that, mm -hmm. that's good, mm -hmm. but that merging together and finding trustworthy people that you can do business with to lower your inventory and your overhead and make more money, mm -hmm. that's, wow. that's a good thing. Wow. Yeah. Thank you so much for this advice. Though. Yeah. That's great. yeah, it's now, a way of thinking, you know. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. But sorry, go ahead. Oh, no, I want to ask you something way different. Okay, mm -hmm. normally I, I ask most teenagers mm -hmm. or whatever this question because it's more fun. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You've been here, okay? Yeah. For how many months? Like, almost. Almost a year. a year. Yeah, yeah. Have you tried dating someone? Uh, <laughs> uh, I. <laughs> I. Yes, you could say that. Ghanaian, right? Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, this is news to me. But I, I'm not like mm. seriously pursuing Who is she? anyone now. <laughs> no, I'm not seriously pursuing anyone. <laughs> anyway. no. No. Really? No. Mm. I, I mean, we like, have I, I have, you, you know. want to compare because most people, opposite. Mm -hmm. The girls come, you know. Oh, no, the, they, they, the girls are coming. I'm just saying, like, I'm not, like, actively, like. Yeah. Oh yeah, okay. you know, like I'm not chasing anybody. When it anybody. comes, it comes. Right? Yeah, exactly. You know, it is what it is. I want you to um, ah, compare mm. the experience to you dating there mm, and in America. American, yeah, and let's see how. That is. Okay. Um, <laughs> well, I think that there is. Interestingly enough, maybe it's just my energy mm -hmm. because I have been told multiple times here yeah. that, oh, you don't want to be with a Ghanaian girl because they're crazy mm -hmm. and, you know, they, <laughs> they, uh, or like they'll push marriage on you, you know, or they just want your money, okay. you know. Yeah. Um, but interestingly enough, I haven't encountered these women. So uh, the, the women that I've been mm -hmm. dealing with here, I haven't had that situation. Okay. Now in America, um, you might, I feel like that might have a higher chance of happening, honestly. Okay. 
um, because you know. more gold against in the US than it is. <laughs> uh, it's possible. I mean, you know, it might be. You know, uh, you know, maybe somebody's watching this and be, be like, oh, they, he's lying. But um, you know, that's just my experience, okay. my personal experience, okay. um, and I haven't had any experiences okay. like that here. Rate, rate the, the Ghanaian woman on a scale of one to ten, <laughs> and also American, <laughs> Black American woman. <laughs> Okay. Oh, just black American women? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I mean, you, you get uh, all racist? Yeah, I don't care what okay, the color so is. Yeah. Okay, so American woman. And okay. Um, <laughs> oh, man. I mean... Based on your experience. Based on my experience, yeah. uh, I'm going to say Ghanaian women. Yeah. I'm going to say like a, <laughs> like a seven, a seven? seven, eight. Seven, eight? Yeah. Okay, just eight. And then okay. uh, American... Mm -hmm. About the same, like so. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, so. he's trying to be politically <laughs> <laughs> Hey, man. <laughs> no, um, no, I'm not taking it. No, <laughs> okay, all right. So if I'm really, really <laughs> being real, be real, be real, you know, real. I had a, a few situations in. in I'm uh, learning right now. What's going on with you? Uh, Thanks for asking this question. That really? were. Uh, you don't tell her. I, well, <laughs> because it, okay, so here's the thing. Because I'm not like I, I would tell her if I'm seriously dating somebody. If but I'm you like gotta, really, <laughs> she should know everything. Yeah, oh well. Uh -huh. you know, but uh, <laughs> so um, in America, I had a few situations that were yeah. very frustrating. Mm. Even if it wasn't even it like sure a serious thing, mm -hmm. but uh, Crazy girl. yeah. So. <laughs> Uh, I knew she I think, wasn't the one. Oh, <laughs> hmm. oh sorry. Yeah. I love your mom. <laughs> <laughs> I shouldn't have said that. Sorry. Um, but yeah, uh, if you're watching, love you. But, um, so uh, <laughs> I think in America, I've had a few different situations. I've had more frustrating situations in America, but also I've only been here not even a year. Okay. So. It makes sense. It makes Take sense. that as you. So will. should we give you some time? Yeah, we'll give me. Back. Yeah, we'll come back sure, to that. We'll you know, we'll do back. another interview. You know, and <gasps> you know, advise we'll, we'll see. your male friends to date Ghanaians if they actually like. Do you think I can really find like, one here? Well, yeah, because I don't like say? to. I don't like to generalize. Okay. So. I mean, I could be like, hey, man, you know, I'm not like introducing a new girl like, oh yeah, she Ghanaian. You gotta yeah. like, you know, yeah. but. Maybe, maybe I just haven't met the right girls yet, you know. Okay, but your we'll mom see. was laughing so much. I'll come to you. You, you, you said you are open. Wow. You, because you, that's what are you a, asking me? That's not the intention from the beginning. You no. moved here. No. And I do are you know, open to maybe? Okay, I do know that there are American <laughs> women. I do know there are American women who intentionally move here because okay. they want right. to find their Love, Ghanaian yeah. king. King, yes, yes. That was not my situation, not my story. I wasn't thinking about that at all. Mm -hmm. However, yeah. I have wonderfully met a wonderful gentleman mm -hmm. who is Ghanaian, and he has been awesome. Wow. I was given much advice. Mm. Don't mess with no Ghanaian men. <laughs> They'll ruin your life. I was told that multiple times, mm. and I said, you've dated every Ghanaian man? Mm -hmm. How do you know that? Right. How can you say that? Right. They're all the same. These are this is from Ghanaian women. Okay. Well, really? Oh yeah. Oh yes. I was told that multiple times. Mm. If whatever you do, do not don't you date no Ghanaian man. And I was like, wow. So later on, as we've progressed, um, I have a wonderful, wonderful gentleman who's okay. in my life. Nice. And there's beauty in it. Wow. There's wonders. Oh wow. He's great. Oh wow. So So you rate Ghanaian men on the scale of one to ten? <laughs> I'll rate him. <laughs> Only him. I'll rate him. <laughs> well yeah, because I, I feel like that's not fair for her because yeah. you know. Yeah. Yeah. I'll rate him because I was involved with an American man okay. and being respectful, that didn't work well. Mm. And he was American. Okay, right to side by side. No. <laughs> That's messy. Okay, that. That's no. messy. That's the messy. The gentleman I have is a 10. Yeah, He's a 10. Joking. He's wow. a great man. Wow. He's great. This is beautiful. Yeah. You've, you've been on the continent and everything yeah. is, is great. Would you say you're comfortable mm -hmm. in Ghana now? I am. Yeah. I am. No. Um, mm. My heart is just wanting to see Ghanaians treated well mm. amongst themselves. Okay. 
Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Oh. I think there's, yeah, people there's... have said there's a lot of backbiting, pulling each other back. You've seen that here? Distrust. Distrust, okay. Distrust. And again, whatever the history is, I don't know no, what that history okay. has been. Okay. Um, but I will say that an American woman gets treated better than a Ghanaian woman. Yeah. And yeah. I have issue with that. Yeah. Don't bypass her yeah. who's Why carrying so? a huge basket on her head full of food, having a baby on her back. Don't bypass her. Carrying a bucket of money. And run to an American woman to carry, oh, let me help you with that. Why don't you ask the Ghanaian woman? I like this one. Why? Yeah. Why would you pass her? This woman is a, who, you, this is who you are. Why does she not get the same treatment as an American woman? That doesn't make sense. That's 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 ridiculous. Mm -hmm. That is very interesting that you said that. I don't like it. Wow. Don't yeah. do that. Yeah, there's been a few times where something like that has happened and I'll call them out like, yo, like mm -hmm. you or mm -hmm. there'll be a man here, a Ghanaian man mm -hmm. that'll like give his whatever he's carrying to the woman and just have her carry it and he's like, oh no, no 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 he's okay she's okay with it she's okay and it's like bro like it's completely the opposite in america it's like yo you're supposed to be carrying the thing for the woman but you know? it should be balanced i don't it think it should be, be that way mm. you hold my bag i hold your bag mm -hmm. yeah. i see yeah, yeah, yeah. i see you're right. saying between the man and I mean, the woman yeah. i think it's nice to do that mm -hmm. i think that's nice but if yeah. you're gonna do something for a woman mm -hmm. and not do it for the other woman who's from your own okay, culture that's yeah. not right. Okay. That's not right. Okay. Let's advise the African youth mm. who thinks it's not possible to make it here on our continent mm -hmm. until they go to the U.S. and the U.K. If they yeah. are watching this right now. I actually had three interns, Ghanaian young interns mm. from the ages of 18 to 24. Mm -hmm. um, I will say that, again, if you're not finding that you are satisfied in Ghana, are you not satisfied because you are being pushed to live someone else's life? Or are you not finding satisfaction because you are trying to live your own passion and you just don't know where the opportunities are? Mm. Because there are people who can help you find where those opportunities are. Yeah. Don't give up on your dream. Um, I think it's important as young people to know that all things are possible. Mm -hmm and you can make it okay. Okay. i believe in ghana okay. but if you want to travel the world feel free to travel the world and find other opportunities but don't think that you can't make it in ghana okay. you just have to search for outside of your immediate surroundings it shouldn't be out of bitterness okay. i think a lot of people are have the, a lot of ghanaians have a feeling of like oh i want to go to this other country because they have a bitter feeling of being here, which not to say that I don't understand that because there are plenty of, mm -hmm. and I feel like some of the traditionalism here, like you were just saying, mm -hmm. living somebody else's life. Oh, you need to do college and do this and do this and you need to be like this and you need to be like this. But it's not really pushing like, what do you want to do? Mm -hmm. yeah. And I think what that leads to is a lot of rebellion. It leads to a lot of bitterness. And I feel like people shouldn't want to flee the country out of that. Yeah. I feel like they should want to get out because mm -hmm. they would want to travel and just experience the world, not because, oh, I got to leave Ghana because yeah. this, this, and this. You know? Well, if you guys have the chance, right, mm -hmm. to change one thing about Ghana, Africa, it's one thing. I mean, you've not been to other places, but if you're given the chance to change one thing here, yeah. On the continent, what would that be? I don't think I've traveled the continent so enough. Ghana. Okay, Ghana. Mm. Mm -hmm, Ghana. I honestly don't think I've traveled Ghana enough to even answer that honestly, mm. okay. because I did not come here. Remember, I've not. I moved here. I didn't visit, mm -hmm. go back to America, visit, mm -hmm. and that's a lot of mm -hmm. Americans do that before they make their final okay. transition. And so move. you just came at once. I came at once. Okay. So, and so I came here to live. I didn't come here as a tourist. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people go to all kinds of places when they visit and mm -hmm. they're seeing Ghana all over the place. Mm -hmm. I came to Abiri mm -hmm. and Accra. Okay. I just went to Kamasi mm -hmm. a few months ago. So I don't think I really can say okay. I've seen it's enough to say I feel it's such fair. and such should change. Okay. Mm -hmm. I like that. I mean, um, 
then advice you've already advised the diaspora isn't it Mm. Okay, there's another advice. People came here on the continent, the diasporans, and they wanted to live large, even more than what they, they live in the US. You know? mm. And people couldn't sustain, some of them couldn't sustain it, and they had to leave. Mm. If you have advice for those people, if they want to move back again, what would that advice be? I think moving, you have to dedicate yourself to a certain way of thinking, I feel like. Um, because if you're just like, um, even thinking about myself, like, um, you can't be like, oh, well, I'm going to come here and use this money for ABC yeah. because the money will run out because yeah. everything costs here. That's something that people that haven't been here need to know mm -hmm. that everything costs. Even, you know, if you don't have your own car, mm -hmm. you're paying for a ride to everywhere, you know. Or dashing. Um, right, exactly. <laughs> so... Um, there is a strong sense. I think you got to get your money in order mm -hmm. for real. Um, even though, um, the currency is, if you have, you know, a thousand dollars, that's like maybe. way higher. It's like 8,000 CDs yeah. now. So, um, I think eight CDs for every one American dollar yeah. in it right now. So, um, I think you need to be, uh, smart with your money. You need to, um, get into the mindset of like, okay, yes, the money stretches farther, mm -hmm. but at the same time, you don't want to be um, just just loose loosey goose with your your money, you know. I have a thought on that, if mm, I can. Um, the pressures that Americans feel, because mm -hmm. there are pressures, mm -hmm. they are different from what Ghanaians feel living in Ghana. Mm -hmm. But there are strong, hard pressures that Americans feel at the diaspora who want to get out yeah. of America mm -hmm. and live a better life in Ghana. Um, I will say this, mm -hmm. that running away from something doesn't mean everything's going to be perfect okay. here. Okay. You have to have victory here mm -hmm. before you go anywhere else. And it doesn't mean necessarily that the problems that you're facing dissipates where you are. Mm -hmm. But until you get peace here and in here, mm -hmm. it's going to follow you, you everywhere you okay. go. Mm -hmm. Wow. What is your most favorite thing about Ghana? Now what? Most favorite thing? The people. The people. Mm. I, I think the, the peace that I feel peace. being here. Yeah. Um, it, it's just, you feel it. Like, I feel it in the air even right now. Like there's just in America, you just I've always had peace within myself. Mm -hmm. So like I, I deal with that, but it's just different. It's a different it feeling over here. Wow. Um, it's Ghana is more, it's more peaceful than the U.S. Absolutely. Okay. A million like gun violence here. Like what? Yeah. A look, uh, there's a there's a there's a false humility and false happy mm. that I experience here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, by the mm -hmm. grace of God, you hear that a lot. <laughs> How are you doing today? I'm fine by the grace of God, but yet and still, there's this undercurrent of frustration and some mm -hmm. hopelessness okay, yeah. that I also feel. Mm -hmm. um, the, the niceties of the the Ghanaians are the nicest people on earth. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think that's very nice really? when I am being at the roadside, as an example. Mm -hmm. Some, not all, mm -hmm. some of the roadside ladies mm -hmm. know that I am foreign. Mm -hmm. What is the word in tree? Mm -hmm. Obrini. <laughs> and instead of giving me five tomatoes mm -hmm. for a good price, they'll try to jack up the price mm. because I'm American. Yeah. Yeah. So these are some things, yeah. you know. Wow. Interesting. We've had a wonderful conversation. Yeah. Okay. Before we end, I want to ask you this. Do you have any regrets? Do you have any regrets? No regrets. Okay. I just wish my daughters and us were back okay. all together. Okay. But again, they're on their journey. But no, no regrets. For if me you have here. a message for them. Right now, what would that message be? <laughs> for if you move to Ghana, move for the right reason. I can't say what your right reasons are, but I will say this 
if you are a person who is self-serving, self-seeking, and will run over your own people to get a better life, mm -hmm. um, that's questionable. Mm -hmm. So if you move here, move for the right reasons. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think um, being able to have the right mindset regarding your, and that just goes with what you just said, um, having the, the mindset of um, wanting to do great things here, but it might not be right for you at the same time, you know, like I don't want to act like, oh yeah, like this is the perfect place to live and this is amazing, you know. Um, so, you know, it, it's not for everybody, but if you do feel like you would want to get into it and have it be a place that you would want to live, do the right research and definitely get your money in order. Get your money in order. Okay, so has it been all worth it for you guys moving back? It has been. Mm. Wow. Even with the troubles, even with the struggles, wow. for me, it has not outweighed the benefit and the blessing okay. of okay. moving to Ghana. Okay. Okay. The benefit and the blessing. Okay. Yeah. yeah. It's been worth it, right? Yeah, okay. I, I think so. If you have a final message for people watching right now in the diaspora all over the world, what would that message be? Life is hard for a lot of people all over the world. Hard. There's things happening. Um, inflation, food shortages, what have you. I'll say don't waste any more time not living a passionate life. Don't live any more time being surrounded by people who don't mean you forgive the bad English, no good. Um, live life lavishly. And when I say lavishly, I'm not speaking of materialistic. I'm referring to making sure your heart is well and making sure your mind and your body and your spirit is well. Beautiful. Thank you guys so much for talking to me. Thank you. It's, it's been an honor. I'm really it's been great, glad yeah. you, gave, you guys came on the show. Thank you mm -hmm. for this opportunity. You're doing an awesome work. Thank you. Yeah, Thank you. it's been great. <laughs> I appreciate you. I'll say one, yeah. Go. Thank you guys so much for watching. It's been a wonderful conversation. And please, please like, share, and subscribe. And also, I'll leave their um, names on, you know, on the description and on the screen and also in the description. Do well to follow them and contact them if you need anything. Do you have anything to say? Watch all of his videos. Go to the playlist, go to his page, subscribe. He's doing a wonderful work talking to the diasporan. Let us do this together. Mm. Awesome. And yeah, he's doing great work out here. You know, check him out whenever you can. So, right. yeah. So, your information would be on the screen. And let's say bye-bye to them. Bye. bye. Peace.